Hello and welcome to Thinking with Objects lecture number five interfaces. Let's try this again. So before uh, we get started, I want to notify that interfaces here are not um, graphical interfaces at all, but they are object oriented interfaces. So let's get started making one simple one and then we'll see what we can do with it. So here we go. This time it works better. So first of all, we start with public. Um, public interface to define that it is an interface and what we do then is just type the name and by convention we start with an i and then we have the interface name interface example like that and what we can do here is um, not actually what we do when we have a class so private int my field public interface example uh, all right, and I here as well because that's the name. So here I have a field and a constructor, but that's not going to work. That's not um, uh, well how you do in interfaces. This is how we would do it if it would be a class. And what we will have to do is make this one a public static final end my field, so that like that. And we can call it my constant value instead because we have it final, so so we can't change the value afterwards and we have to give it a value to start with and it's static so it not uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the specific object and it's public so we can reach it anywhere so that's what we have to do for for the variables there the fields and what we will have to do for uh, the methods are public abstract so we can't have any constructors we can't have any methods at all that are defined completely so what I do is public abstract and get my value for instance like that so uh, these two methods are defined, oh, well, not methods, this is, this is a method that's a, that's a variable there. But since this is always the case, we have to have public static final there, and we have to have public abstract here. We can just remove those, and it will just assume that, well, it's going to use those, because those are the only values we can use. So we can't add like protected there. It's going to complain now if I save it there. So it's going to say modify protected not allowed here. Um, so yeah, so other, you can uh, either just type public abstract and then the uh, method, or you can type public um, static final and then the variable here, or you can just leave them out completely and those values will be used anyways. Okay, so let's see how we can use this interface. And when we've uh, done that, I'm going to uh, go on with, with a bigger example that makes a bit more sense. So this is just sort of syntax wise, uh, Show, showing you exactly how it works. So if we create a class like this, we can implement this interface that we just wrote by typing implement i interface, exa interface example, like that. And this is going to work pretty much like a normal class, and then this is uh, that we are implementing the interface is going to do a, a small difference, but we'll see there. Uh, uh, later on what, what it's doing. So I'm just going to start with making two fields here, so private int val2 and then a constructor like any other class, simple class int some value 1 int some value 2 like that and yeah it's it's pretty straightforward, just storing the uh, the parameters like this And finally, a few methods. So what I want to do is public int get value one, which will return the first value. So we can use that well one, and public int get value two. All right, let me spell that. Return val two. Right. So uh, so if I compile it now, I'm going to have some issues. And the issue is we're implementing this interface and what that means is that we have to include all the abstract methods. And this is abstract even though uh, I haven't typed abstract because it's abstract all, uh, all the time. We have to have the methods abstract, like I, like I said. And with abstract methods that we had from the, uh, from the last lecture about abstract classes, uh, we'll have to override them. So public int get my value because this interface has the method uh, that is an int and it's called get my value. 
and what we're going to do here I don't really know is it's like get my value what value so like I said it, this example doesn't really make too much sense it, it's just going to show you the syntax and then I'm going to show you better examples later on so we can just sum those two together and we can like sum it together with the uh, let's see here with the constant no, no. it was called my constant value wasn't it constant value um, so what it does is that we're going to refer to that value. So like I said, it's public static final, so we can reach it from just referring I interface dot my constant value because it's static, and we can reach it because it's public, and we can't change it, change it because it's final, but we can still read it. Okay, so now I have this simple class, and I can compile it because we're implementing I interface, and we're um, uh, adding that method from from the interface. Of course, if we didn't implement the interface at all, we wouldn't need to, to override that method. So let's see how we can use this. So first of all, so now I'm in the interactions page and so I can test some things. So simple class, that's the class, test equals new simple class. Okay, so it takes two int integers, uh, two ints here as uh, parameters in the constructor and if I'm going to give it two parameters I'm going to give it three and two like that so I get um, I create a new simple class here and I store it as test of course when I have that test I can just do print line I can just call um, test dot get value one so that's the first value that I have. And that's obviously going to print up three because I set three there. Then I can print a value two, of course, by just changing that to get value two instead and run it. Then I'm going to get the second value, which is two as defined there. Finally, I also have the method get my value, which I can call and I get 10. Three plus two plus five equals 10. So, so nothing weird here, we, we could just do this with the normal class without implementing an interface, but what we can do now with the interface is something like this. We can use the interface as a type, so now I'm creating a, um, all right, interface example, so now I'm creating a variable that can store a, an instance of this, um, this interface, but we can't do something like this, we can't create a new interface uh, object like that, that doesn't exist. You can create objects from classes, not from interfaces. And that's sort of why interfaces don't have any constructors, you can't make them at all. So what what we'll have to do is give it a value from somewhere else. But what I can do is just do it like that. So what's all, all of this about? Well, I create a variable where I can hold any object implementing I interface example. And up here we can see that we're implementing I interface example in a simple class. So if I create a new new simple class and store it as a simple class here, then I can just store the same simple class. So that's this one that I just created. I can store that into test two here of I interface example. And then if I do test two dot, uh, well print that out actually. So if I do it like this, so test two to get my value, I can still do that. So I'm still using the same code where I print out value one plus value two plus I interface example of my constant value. So that's just summing it up to 10. Uh, I can still do that even though I refer to it as an I interface example. And the only reason why I can do that is because I know that that method exists. So when I have an I interface example, I know that I have an, a method that is returning an integer value and it's called get my value. However, I don't know anything about these two methods. I don't know anything about get value one and get value two. So when I refer to test two here, which is an, of the type I interface example, I can't do get value one. I can't do get value two. They don't exist um, as a part of uh, I interface example. But they are, of course, a part of this simple class. So this was a very first example of interfaces might not make it too much sense why you would even use them but this is just a first syntax example on on how they are used we create them like this what we can have in them and how to implement them in classes and what we'll have to do to use them right so let's see what we can actually have them for because that's quite important in my opinion right so what i'm going to do is create an interface here um, i'm going to open a 
class that I prepared called item, not dot class, sorry, dot java, like that. And what it's going to do is quite simple. Uh, it has a name, it has a price, and it has an amount. So maybe I have like three coins that is worth two, two units each, uh, for instance. Uh, so I can get the name, get the price, get the amount. I can also increase and decrease the amount, like that. Uh, and it's not abstract or anything. These are not items that you're supposed to use. From the last lecture, we saw an item that was abstract. We had a method, uh, an abstract method that was like use use item, and then we had to define that. There's nothing like that here. We just have an item that you can create if you want to. You give it a name, a price, and an amount, and that's what we're going to use when we're creating this interface. So public interf interface i inventory, like that. So this is going to be a interface that we will use to define that an object has an inventory. So if we implement this on any class whatsoever, we're telling it, well, here we have an inventory. So what do we need to do when we have an inventory? Well, we want to be able to get the size, inventory size, so the size of the inventory. So here we have a public abstract int get inventory size. Of course, I didn't add public abstract, but it's doing that on its own. And I want boolean set content position and item. So what this is going to allow us to do is we're going to set the content in the inventory at a specific position with a given item. And if this worked, if we manage to set that content, it's going to return true. Otherwise, it's going to return false, so we know how it went. And finally, I'm going to have a third method here: item get content, and we want the item at a specific position. So there you go, we have three public abstract methods, because those are the only methods that we can have. And since they are abstract, we don't give them any body at all. So there's no content in the different methods, but we still have them here with their return types, their names, and their parameter lists. Okay, there you go, let's use it. So how should we use it? I think we should make it some sort of chest, right? That would make sense, because a chest should have an inventory, right? So public class chest, uh, if we can spell public properly, public class chest implements, and when I've done that, I want to implement i inventory, right? That's the interface from here, which means that we need to specify these three. But we'll see more about that very soon. So how do we want to specify this inventory? Well, we want to store the items for, for a starter, uh, and I'm actually going to do that in an item array, like so. And then we need a constructor. And well, when you create a chest, you might want to set the size of the chest. That would make sense, right? So I want to create a, a chest with 20 slots. I want to create a chest with just four slots or whatever. Items equals new item size. So I'm just going to create a new array to store the items in uh, of, the, of the given size. Then it's a matter of overriding the methods from the interface, because we're implementing our inventory, and therefore we need, we need to override public and get inventory size. And that should return items dot length, because uh, that's the length of our inventory. We have an array here of items, and that's actually, well, all of items, and then we just return the amount we have. And after that, we need to override the next thing. So remember, you need to override all of them, not just one. Uh, public boolean set content in post item item. And they, then, then we want to set the content at this position with that item. And that should be fairly straightforward. Items.pos equals item and then return true. So it went all right to, to do that do this to set the content. So in a chest it's always going to be alright to set the content, no matter what. And finally we want to return a object at a specific location, or well an, I an item. So public item get content uh, int pos like that. Return items at that position. Okay, uh, seems, seems alright. So what we do here, we implement 
uh, our inventory and that forces us to create a method called get inventory size, one called set content with these parameters and one called get content. So all of a sudden we're defining the chest's inventory like this. So why would we even do this? We'll see that in a bit. First I'm going to create a new class that actually uh, uses that inventory. So I'm going to create public class player. So a player should also have an inventory, right? So I implement uh, the I inventory here. But it's not going to be inventories that a uh, player can have, like uh, tools and such. It's going to be, um, well first I want a name of the player, but after that I want a uh, array of armors. So like a helmet and a, a, a pair of boots and things like that. And I've already prepared that class called armor. So what we have here is basically a name of that item. We have a price, of course. We don't specify a, a, an amount. We always use one as the amount. And then we have the type, the value, and the value is how strong it is, so how much damage it protects us from, and the durability, so how long it lasts. And here we go with the armor type. We have zero, meaning helmet, one meaning chest plate, two meaning leggings, and three meaning boots. In the next, next lecture, we will see a better way of defining different types like these, so we can, can have something uh, uh, here that is uh, of, of not an integer type but a specific type and therefore we can do like all right the current armor type is boots the current armor type is helmet and so on but like I said that's the next lecture and a few methods here returning the values right so so we have an armor array here instead okay so what do we want to do well first of all we uh, just want the constructor right uh, where we ask for the uh, player's name store the name like this, uh, there you go, and we, when we've done that, we want to create the, the new armor array, right? New armor, and how, how long should it be? Well, four, one for each piece. So we have uh, first the helmet, then the chest plate, then the leggings, and finally the boots. Seems all right to me. And uh, well, we can make a method here: public string get name. So we return that. Uh, the name of the player. That, could, that seems like a good idea. But after that we should also override all the methods that we have uh, um, that we have from my inventory here. So um, some of them will look a bit like the one in the chest but we can define them as we want to. They don't have to look at all like the ones in the chest. So uh, get inventory inventory size so what's the size of this inventory? Well, it's armor. So that's the armor array there. And then we do uh, length. So that's pretty much this is similar to the one in the chest. Here we did item.length. But like I said, we can do whatever we want. We just need to override it. But then what its content is, is up to us. This, however, how we set the content is going to be a bit different. Um, set content. And the position, of course, so we, it's not going to be different in its declaration here, well, if the, uh, in the name or anything, that's not allowed, we need to override it. And what we're going to check now, before we actually add it to anything, is first of all, is it a piece of armor? We just get an item, but we need to make sure that the item we get is a piece of armor and not something else entirely. You can't, like, wear an apple as a helmet. Maybe you can, uh, but you shouldn't at least. So, so we need to make sure it's a piece of armor. And when we check that it's a piece of armor, we also need to make sure that the player is trying to add this to the correct slot. So we convert it to a piece of armor, and when we've done that, we can do get armor, armor type. Right. So as we can see here, we have the type here zero, one, two, or three, depending on if it's a helmet, chest plate, leggings, or boots. And what we want to do is that that armor type is the same as the position we want to try to add it to. So if we try to add a helmet, we should do that at uh, position 0. If we try to add a chest plate, we should do that at position 1 and so on. So we shouldn't be able to add boots where we are supposed to wear our helmet. And if those things weren't the case, so we didn't have a piece of armor, and the piece of armor wasn't at the correct location, then we return false. So this didn't work. So as you can see here, I'm defining it completely different. In the uh, chest, we just, all right, it went all right, we just store the item there. Here we're making sure that we have the correct item first. And if we have the correct item, 
then we can just armor pass like that equals armor item should be equal symbol here so I need to convert it to armor here because this array here is not an item array it's an armor array but armor is of course a subclass to item so um, that's that method and finally we can override a third one here so public well we have to do that with item get content and this is also fairly easy it's just a matter of um, returning that so we return the uh, piece of armor at that specific location sweet and we don't have to convert it or anything because armor is a subclass to item okay so here we have defined a player so far so good not really I forgot to return true here so if we manage to store that item then it's just a matter of returning true there we go and finally I'm going to add a third inventory public just to give you a good example then uh, when I created these three you will see how we can use them and why it's good to have this I inventory so public class hat stand um, implements I inventory so this is also going to have an inventory and we're going to implement it like the following so private I uh, well armor actually armor hat and then we can add a constructor for the hat stand it's not really that important to do so because I'm not going to add anything in it but just to specify well we don't have the constructor if you remember if you don't add a constructor at all it's actually going to add something that looks like this so I can just do so to to notify the the uh, anyone who looks at the code like I'm, I'm I know I'm not supposed to have a constructor it's not like I forgot about it um, but of course it doesn't really do anything to have an empty constructor there okay so now I need to override the different methods from the interface because I'm implementing the interface and what I can do is first of all do the uh, of course these doesn't have to come in this order I'm just adding them in the same order or all, all the time to keep everything organized so the size is one we only have one uh, slot in this inventory no matter what and that's the hat um, and then we need to override the uh, set content which is the most advanced one in most of the cases here uh, so we get the position and we get the item at th that we want to store at that position and we have to do some something similar to when we checked for for uh, the player so we want to make sure that it is a piece of armor armor and we also want to check if uh, it's a hat or a helmet so get armor type should be equal to zero so that means it's a hat um, or well a helmet and it, therefore we can store it so as you can see this is a bit like the player version but it's not exactly the same return uh, true and as you can see here when we get the inventory size we just return one okay so we have we have this interface now called well we have that for a, for a short while but we have the um, what did I do all right yep. as you can see I got an error here I forgot to uh, override the last method and the last method is of course the one that where we get uh, the content so public item get content return hat so we can just return the hat right away we don't have to care about the position but of course we will have to get a position like that so we have an interface here called i inventory and we're asking for the size of the inventory we want to be able to set the content of the inventory and we want to get the content of the inventory we have three different classes that implements this we have a player which has a four uh, elements long array where we store some pieces of armor and when we set the content of that we make sure that that's the correct piece of armor we have a hat stand where we only have one single item but we need to make sure that it's a helmet when we try to add it and when we get it we just return it and then we have a chest where like every item is valid and we have an array of the given size so let's make an example of this and see exactly why we want to have all of these implementing i inventory right so the example here is going to be called uh, inventory example seems like a good name for it <coughs> and of course we need a public static void main uh, wrong order and with the args there and what I'm going to do here is writing a method called add item to inventory and here's where the magic starts or well the the power, power with the interfaces start. 
So I want to add an item to an inventory. So which inventory? Should we add a player? Should we uh, well, use a player? Should we use a chest? Or should we use a uh, hat stand? All of those are inventories, right? Well, it wouldn't make sense for us to have three different methods. All of them are implementing the same thing. And as we saw in the interactions pane earlier, it's gone now, um, was that we could do something like this. So we can have uh, uh, use the interface as a type. So what I'm going to do here in the parameter list, I'm going to ask for an inventory. Okay, it could be a player, it could be a hat stand, it could be a chest, it could be something else entirely that implements I inventory, and then I want the item. Okay, <coughs> seems all right to me. Um, and what we want to do is we want to see if we can fit this item inside this inventory somewhere. So what I'm going to do is do for int i equals zero, and then we're going to loop through all the items. And how we do that? Well, we can do it like this. So what I'm doing now is I'm getting the inventory size, and I'm looping through until I get all, all the way to the end of the inventory. So how does this work? Well, I have my interface called i inventory. Here I define that this should be a method called get inventory size. It takes no parameters and it returns an integer value. When we implement the interface uh, on the player class or on the any other of the classes, we have to specify the get inventory size because that's a method in the interface. That means that we have to specify it here, we have to override it here, and therefore we're going to return a value. In this case we're going to return the length of the armor array, which is 4. Here we're going to return one because we just have a new hat and here we're going to return uh, the amount of items that we have in the array. Observe that we don't have to know this. We actually don't know it inside the example here. We just ask the interface what's your size. We know that in in inventory will have a size because that's one of the methods but we don't know exactly how it will return that. So in the case for the Hatstone, for instance, it just returns one. In the case of the others, it returns the length of an array. We don't know that, and we don't actually care in this example here. Okay, so what we do next is we want to make sure that the slot we we're looking at is empty. And how we do that? Well, we ask the, uh, the interface for the content at a specific location. How do we get the content? Well, we don't have a clue. Of course, since we've coded the classes here for, for, for these specific, uh, well, these specific classes that implements I inventory, we know that here we're returning the content of the, the array, here we're returning the hat, and so on. But we didn't know that we have just the player, the hat, and the chest. We can have any class that implements I inventory. But the good thing is we know that there's something called get content just because that's specified as a method here. So we give it an integer, we get an item. And if that's no, that, me that means that we can um, add our in uh, item at that position, otherwise it would be already be occupied. So what I want to do next is set content i item like that. And what I'm, I'm using here is uh, what I've used before. If the first part of an and is false, uh, then we won't execute the next one. So if we don't, uh, so we we actually have an empty slot, then we're going to do and set the content. So what will this do? Well, like I've said before, we're referring to the i inventory, the inventory itself, and we're setting the content. We don't have a clue of how that is sorted out. We just know that we can set a content. We give it a position, which is i here. We give it an item, which is item, and we will get a boolean value back if it worked or not. That's the only part we know, and that's the only part we care about. That's the part defined in here. Then we, of course, use that in different ways. Here we do it like this. In the chest we do it like like this. In the player we do it like this. But like I said, we don't care and we don't actually know about that in here. So if we, if we have an empty slot and we manage to add our new item to it, that means that we um, managed to add this item at uh, that specific slot. So let's print that out and position plus i, like so. So it shows the position, and then we return, because we're done here. We added the, the thing there at the first valid slot. And finally, we can print out the, uh, the name here. Can't 
uh, be added to this inventory. So if we reach the end and we didn't manage to fit it in there, then we'd print out, well, this item, we, we couldn't fit it in the inventory. But what we're doing, we're looping through every single slot because we know that we start at zero and we go all the way to the maximum size of this inventory. And therefore we can just ask the inventory to get inventory size. We want to see if the content equals null, so we know that it's empty. And we can just ask the inventory to get the content at a specific position. And we can also ask the inventory to set the content at a specific position. So this is the beauty of interfaces. We get the interface here. We know that we have these three methods and we know how to use them. Of course, we don't know what they do. We don't know how they are implemented in different classes because the interface is of course only set up by these three methods and they are public and abstract so they have no body. Then we can implement them in different ways in here. So here we have the set content of the player, we have for instance the get content of the hat, and we have the um, here we go here to get inventory size of the chest. So we, we have these methods, um, we override them and implement their, their functionality and if we can just use them. So if I compile now, it should be all right unless I spelled something wrong, but there we go, everything worked all right. So let's see if we can use this. So first of all, I'm, I want to create three different Im inventories. So I'm going to create a hat stand called room for a hat. Seems like a very good name. And you create a hat stand just by creating a new hat stand. No, no parameters in the constructor or anything. Then I want to create a player called Steve. New player, Steve, like so. And finally, I want to create a small chest of the type chest, of course. New chest. So I have these three different um, types here. I have a hat stand, I have a player, and a chest. But we know that all of them implements I inventory. So what does this mean? Well, that we can send it along as the, uh, as the first parameter here. So we can use the small chest as the first parameter, we can, can use Steve as the first parameter, and we can uh, use room for a hat as the first parameter, because all of these types are implementing I inventory. Then we might want to need some items, but that will just take a while to time, so I prepare those. So we have a non-hat, which is called definitely definitely not a hat. It has a value of um, five, and it's an, an amount of three, so with three, definitely not a hat. Then we have some arm pieces of armor here. So we have boots of magic, which cost 250. Uh, we have um, the third type, so that's boots. We have the um, armor value three, and the durability 20, so they can hold, hold um, well, they don't break uh, that quickly. Then we have this epic helmet, uh, like that. It has, a, well, it costs a thousand. It's of this type zero, which means it's a helmet. And then we have a, uh, uh, well, a armor value of five, so it protects us quite a lot. And then we have uh, durability 10. And then we have a weird cap as well. That's also of the type zero, but it's not as good. So we have four different items here. So what I can do now is try to add add item to inventory room for a hat. And I want to try to add the non-hat there. So this is a totally fine method call. We're calling this method here. We give it one I inventory and room for a hat is one, one I inventory and we give it an item and that's the non-hat. Then we can continue and uh, try to add the boots here. That's also fine, that's also an item even though we create a new ar piece of armor but since armor extends item it's totally fine. Uh, and then we can try to add helmet and finally a cap here. And what I'm going to do later is add the boots to Steve. We'll try to add that and try to add the cap to Steve and finally a uh, small chest. Uh, there I'm going to add a non-hat like so. So what I'm doing here is just calling this method multiple times but the beauty of this is that the first parameter here is asking for an IE inventory rather than just a class. We ask for the interface and then we have three different classes here that all implements that interface. All right, so if I run the code now, I'm going to get um, defi definitely not a cap can't be added to this inventory. And that makes sense. We try to add a non-hat to the, uh, to the um, 
well to the inventory so we do set content here but since we sent along a hat stand when we do set content this is the code we're going to run and it's going to check that it's an armor and that wasn't the case the next time when we check for the boots of magic it's going to say that we can't add these to this inventory and this time it's, the, uh, it's due to this condition here so it has to be of the type 0 as well and the boots had type 3 then we try to add the epic cap, no not epic cap, epic helmet and that was success successfully added to position 0 because well it was a type armor it had the correct type and therefore we set it there and returned true however when we tried to add the weird cap it didn't work because we, we are also making sure that the content equals null and in the hat stand we get the content by just returning the current hat and that's what we set the last time we used it so that didn't work we can add that one which made perfectly sense and then we add boots of magic to position 3 at the player at Steve there and weird cap at position 0 so in the player we're defining it so uh, so the content is set at, uh, at a different position with a specific item if it's a piece of armor and the armor type is the same as the position and that's why we couldn't add the boots of magic to slot 0, 1 or 2 but then when we uh, looked at the last, last slot position 3 it did work and the reason why we looked for four during four different slots were because the inventory size we returned was 4 because the length of the armor array was 4 and then finally we added definitely not a hat at position 0 in the chest because the small chest allows any items to be added if we take a look here returns true all the time of course if we would add another item to it we would add that to item number 1 item number two, uh, well position number 1 position number 2 and so on um, until we can't fit anymore so if we try to add 11 items we wouldn't fit the last one because we only had uh, 10 slots here uh, there you go so quite handy all of these implements I inventory and since they all implement I inventory we know that they all have get inventory size set content and get content we don't know and we don't care about exactly what they do when we use it from here and then I can use it from here using I inventory here call get inventory size call get content and finally call set content like that right so let's take a further look of what we can do so what if we want to create a subclass to the chest? Public class magic chest. So how does this work? Well, we can extend and implement uh, things. So we can ex extend a class and implement an interface at the same time. So we just do extends first. So we need to do that first. Extends chest and then implements our inventory. Because this is obviously also an inventory. Like that. And it's going to be a very simple uh, magic chest. So we need to get the size and therefore we send that along. We, we're not going to save it ourselves, we're just going to call the super constructor. So we call the constructor of the chest. And then we want to override public boolean set content. Like this. And what I want to do is do the normal thing, super.set content. But then what I want to do is the magic thing. So it's going to be oops, quite a, quite a silly magic thing. What it's going to do is that if we add in an item, it's going to increase the amount of that item we have. So if we add like one coin, it's going to be two coins all of a sudden. So it's very easy to abuse it, of course, but this is not a game, it's an example. So make, make sure that the content we just added is not null. And if that's the case, then we want to increase the amount we have there by one. Okay, so what are we looking at now? We need to return true, of course. True, I said true. Uh, of course, like that. So what are we looking at now? Well, we look at a subclass of something um, that is spelled wrong, that is, that is extending this chest that is an inventory. But what we're doing, we're implementing inventory in um, the magic chest. They go here as well, but we're just extending one of them. So why is that the case? We have to extend all of them, right? Well, override all of them. them. And the reason why we don't have to do that here is, of course, because they are already de defined here. We have to have all of the methods overridden. We have to have them all defined. We have to have the functionality in them. But that doesn't mean we have to have them in, in this class specifically. We can have them in the parent class, and that's totally fine. And that's why 
I'm just overriding one. And the reason why I override it is just because I want to change how it works. As you can see, I'm calling the super super method anyways. But furthermore, since we're implementing the inventory here, the I inventory there, there is no reason to do it here as well. It doesn't do anything, so I can just remove it. Uh, I didn't want to click that. There you go. So um, in this magic chest, what we do is that we get everything from the chest. Uh, we extend that, so we continue working from, from where we, we built the chest. But since chest uh, implements I inventory, it's totally fine to just, uh, uh, to just ignore that. And now we can use magic chest as an inventory because it's super class is implementing I inventory. Sweet. Right, so before the break, we have uh, five minutes left. Uh, I'm going to give you one last example on, on these super classes and stuff. So what if we had this abstract class? So how does it work when we have an abstract class called base cart? And a, a cart will have an inventory. So we implement uh, I inventory like this. Um, and what I'm going to do is do private int max speed and protect it item item. So as you can see we will only store one single item but we will also store the maximum speed of the cart. So then we do base cart, so the constructor here, and max speed. This dot max speed equals max speed. Alright, so what do we want to do? Well first of all we might want to override uh, with just two R's um, the uh, size of this inventory. And that's fairly simple, right? I believe so, because it's just to return one. We have one single item in this inventory, and that's the only thing we want. And second of all, we want to uh, public item get content end position. So what we want to do here is return the content. Like that. Very straightforward. And as you can see, I've done it wrong, get inventory size. So that's why it's good to have override here. It's complaining, all oh, right, you're not overriding. But I'm like, oh, right, I wanted to. So that's why I spelled it wrong. So as you can see here, I'm actually just overriding two of these. I'm not overriding the third, the set content one. And it's still not complaining. Why is that? Well, remember what I did. I made this an abstract class. So in the interface, we have different methods. These are like abstract, remember. And remember from last lecture, an abstract method has to be overridden in a class that is not abstract. So we can have abstract classes with abstract methods in them, that's sort of the point. So since we have this base card being abstract, we don't actually have to specify anything at all. We don't have to specify these, but of course we do so because, well, we'll have to do it eventually, and it's pretty simple. We just do return one and get content. The reason why I don't uh, override the set content is because that's going to be spe uh, uh, specific for this specific card, so it's going to be different. So let's see if we can make a subclass to base card. And to do so, I'm going to use another class that I've prepared. Uh, ah, come on, there you go. Called explosive. It's very straightforward. It's an explosive that extends item, so it's an item, and we give it a name, the price, the amount, which is the same as that we give the item, and then we also give it the power. We send these things along to the superclass, which is item, and then we store the power. And then we have a method called get explosion size, and we can uh, calculate that by multiplying the amount of items we have with the power of this item. Right. So let's create a a cart using that. So public uh, class explosive cart and that's obviously going to extend base cart and also that another obvious thing is that the explosive cart should have an inventory we should give it an inventory where we can store the explosives but since base cart uh, it's going to extend there you go, the base cart um, since that it already implements i inventory there's no reason for us to do it in the subclass it doesn't do anything okay so let's add the constructor here I'm actually not going to ask for the max speed, I'm just going to send along 5. So 5 is always the max speed for an explosive cart, apparently. And then we need to override um, public boolean set content this method here. 
and what we want to do is make sure that item is an instance of explosive and if that's the case so if you're trying to add an explosive to this cart then we just set well this dot item equals item so we store the item which is totally fine because I made it protected and I did so for a reason so I can reach it like that and then return true like that and otherwise return false return false like that and if I hit compile explosive cart yes it's going to work properly so all of a sudden we have this explosive cart we set the content here which is totally fine and if we check in the explosive cart and its superclass we can see that we have set content we have get inventory size and we have get content which is all the three different methods in the interface so we're implementing everything well we are overriding everything we need so that's totally fine but as we can see if we go into the explosive cart again and remove this it's not going to work yes because then we're not implementing well we're not overriding the last method called set content and that's what it's complaining about but if we go into magic chest and remove it we're obviously fine because we have that method already specified in chest so we don't have to specify all the methods in our current class but we have to specify them somewhere in in the current class or in any super class so that's everything for now about interfaces after the break we will continue to see how we can use interfaces in an even more powerful way to expand this example with the inventory and everything but that's going to be in, in about 15 minutes so i'll see you then <laughs>